So looking at the printer here from the side, it looks really nice. And some of the blue that it has, it stands out nicely. So let's start here from the top. This is our spool holder. So we'll grab a spool here just to demonstrate real quick. So yeah, our filament will kind of go like this and then down and through the detector into the dual gear extruder. This is a great extruder that's pretty powerful and has dual gears. You guys can see one here and then one inside which drives it. So yeah, it's just, it's a very consistent kind of filament feed into the hot end. But looking at the back here, we can see we have two guides here on the top for the lead screws, but they don't actually have bearings. It's just kind of plastic guide, or at least that's what it looks like. So we got a 20-20 channel on the top and then 2040s, both sides going down. Pull holder there, far this way as we can. Again, as we talked about so we can have a good curve here for the filament. Here's another look of the detector here going into the extruder and the extruder motor. So the lead screw comes down. We have anti-lash springs with brass bushings going down into coupler here with the motor and same thing on the other side. This is what the back of the hot end looks like and the wheel we adjusted. You guys can see we have a cooling fan, axial style, and a silicon heat block sock there. So going down to the bed, it is aluminum with the magnetic sheet there that magnetizes the build plate. And underneath, you guys can see, we do have a heated bed, but it is not insulated. So the Y axis rides on two rails that are kind of separated and there are four rollers on the bed that go around it. And this is our gear for the Y axis motor, which is down inside. Going over here, we can see this is our Y axis end stops switch. So down below that we have the power input socket. It is fused with an on and off switch. And going to this side, this is where our switch for the power supply selecting our voltage. I'm not sure how well you guys can see that, but we are actually set to 230 volts right now, which is not correct for me. So I'm just going to grab this Allen wrench and switch it over to the 115 and now it's where it needs to be. So you definitely want to check this because if you don't, you could have trouble with the printer or worse, even burn it up. And on the very bottom, you guys can see those large feet and there are four of them. So now we are back up front and we can see our channels it's got this smooth finish. They still have a groove in them, but it's, you know, kind of a nicer finish than usual. Also same finish here. So on this side, we can see a little cap here with the GTEC logo, make it possible. X-axis in-stop switch is actually the normal mechanical kind. And the Y and the two Zs are the sensor style. So this is our X-axis motor and then the gear. We look below that metal tab here that goes into the Z-axis in-stop switch. And same thing on this other side. This is where we adjust the X-axis belt. Looking a little closer at our hot end, we got a sticker here high temperatures. We do have a clip here also for the coupler. The hot end itself is actually not too large. It's got all this venting around it. it. looks pretty nice. And on this side, we actually have a couple threads there that must have some kind of accessory that can be installed there. Yeah, you guys can see the fan duct there with the hot end the heat block and the nozzle. And also guys, if you see that little white thing right there, that looks like maybe an LED light of some sort. So going down from there, we saw the build plate already. It has this nice little tab, you can pick it up. So this is where we adjusted the Y axis belt, the tension. Here we have the manufacturing label, the model number, the max temperature, the voltage inputs, max bed temperature, print size 255 by 255 by 260 and the platform size is a little larger than that which is 260 by 260. Going down from there we can see this is where we plug in the USB cable that goes to the computer and our micro SD card slot. So the front's pretty clean until we get to the right side which has our screen. Let's go ahead and peel off the protector here. And it is a pretty nice large touchscreen display. Nothing too much here. Some venting and some venting on the other side. All right, guys. So for the next part, I'm going to plug it in, turn it on, make sure everything works, check all of our axes, preheat it, and then level the bed. All right. So I got the printer plugged in. Let's go ahead and hit the power button, see what happens. All right. So I beeped. The screen lit up. And it looks like it booted up very quickly, actually. All right. So I'm going to click on tools here and we have a home button so I'm going to click on that so we're going to make sure that everything works okay so it's moving up to the side so that's the X the Y is working and now it's going down and it's very quiet by the way especially on the Z I'm actually very impressed normally the uh, Z sounds are quite loud and there it goes 
So the great part is, is that it individually reads each side. So it's gonna be perfect each time. All right, so all of our motors work and switches. You probably guys noticed that we didn't have any knobs and I forgot to totally mention that. And the reason for that is because this printer does have out of bed leveling. So you can't even adjust the bed up and down or corner to corner, it's just pre-adjusted, which is quite interesting and you know, kind of a bold move on the design because you know, you really have to be pretty close in order to compensate with the out of bed leveling. But this is what this printer does and let's see how well it does it. So I don't know if you guys can see here on the bottom, it says auto leveling. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. So it looks like it's gonna out of bed level and then we're gonna do the Z axis F side. So let's click on that. Okay, so it's actually asking us to use a tool of some sort and just to push on the nozzle because it wants confirmation that I guess it's working. So it does appear that this has one of those strain sensors in the nozzle. So when the nozzle touches something, it feels it. So because I didn't do it quick enough, it kind of canceled the whole thing or failed it, but we can restart here. So it's asking us to touch it. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. Now here it's showing us it's going to go through the nine points and take measurements. And it is preheating the nozzle to 130C and the bed to 60C. Now hopefully you guys can see that. There might be a little too much glare, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And right now we're just waiting for the machine to do its thing. So the screen is tilted about 45 degrees, which is nice when you're looking at it from top down, but maybe not so nice when you're looking at it straight at it like this. So. All right, so the nozzle's hot. The bed is at 52 going to 60 and yep, I can definitely feel it. It's getting toasty. All right, so it looks like it's ready to do its thing. All right, so it's taking its first measurement and you can maybe see the one is flashing green over here. All right, so it's done with one, now it's going to two. And it is doing a double take, one quick one and then one slower one. Okay, so that was kind of interesting. It went back and homed until it finished the eighth point. All right, so we are on our last one here. For some reason it's taking extra measurements here. Just keeps doing it and doing it, very weird. Okay, so it says that it's done. And it looks like it's homing. Okay, so I guess we need to hit the back button now. Now we can adjust the Z offset and it is available before actually this was not available. So yeah, after it does its automatic leveling, it presents the Z offset button. So let's click on that. And we need to click on start to begin. So we're gonna need some kind of paper. I'm just gonna use this tips paper that came with it. And I can see already that we're definitely too low. So let's go ahead and bring it up. So we got down, up, and then increments. We're up 0 0.01 right now, so we'll keep it at that. So let's keep going up a little bit. All right, so we're just gonna adjust this until we have a nice drag on the paper. You can also kind of eyeball it under there. I think I'm pretty happy right there. So yeah guys, it's not too complicated. Then we're just gonna click the save button and it says successfully saved. And our offset is 0.39 plus. So yeah, quite a bit up I had to go. So let's go back here. Let's go ahead and home the printer again. We'll grab our little SD card, which is a four gig, and this is where it plugs in, probably upside down. Yep, and it does click in. So let's see if we have anything on there to print. So we're gonna click on printing, and sure enough, there are three folders there, or files. We can print, we got a rocket, a G, and owl looks like. So I guess maybe we'll print one of these and see how it turns out. But before we do that, let's take a closer look at the screen here. So these are our files here. We're in the SD printing mode here. So as you can hear, it does beep every time I click something. So this is the tools. We got preheat, PLA, ABS buttons, very nice, and also a cool button. And it looks like here you can do a custom preheat also. So, so if we click on PLA, you guys can see it goes to 190 and 60 on the bed. So let's go back. And by the way, the screen is nice and bright and also has a good detail. Filament change, so we can control the extruder here to load and unload. Move is going to let us move each axis individually. And this is the amount you wanna move. The home button takes all the axes to its home positions. And then we got the auto leveling is what we did earlier. And then the Z offset, which if you do need to adjust it, you can go back here and you know go up and down. 
We also have manual leveling, and I guess this will let us manually adjust it ourselves. But and then we have a motor unlock, so this just releases all of the motors. Let's say if they're like you can't turn it by hand or move it by hand, you can release them here. And that's pretty much it for tools. And then the settings, we've got run out filament sensor, and you can turn that on and off. So it's actually off. We do have one, so let's turn it on. And then our language is English, and if you click on it, it changes to Chinese. So let's go back to English. Here we have the sound, so you can either turn it on or off. So I'll probably leave it on. And then we got the LED control, which turns on the light and off. And it was actually on earlier, so. And the last button here is about, and this is everything about the printer. And we do have a restore button here for whatever reasons. All right, pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty much everything and quite simple. We'll also check out the menu once we start printing and what's available. All right, so now that we know that we have something to print, let's go ahead and put the filament in. So we've got to make sure that we are preheating or we are preheated. I think, yeah, we are already. Well, that's good. So let's see if I can move you guys to the side so you can see maybe a little better. All right, so we got our filament coming from the top. You want to go ahead and cut it on an angle. That way it feeds better through the different parts we have to go through, like the filament detector here. So we'll go right through that. And then after that, we're going to go into the extruder assembly. Once we go inside, what we need to do is relieve this lever here by pushing on it this way. And then we can feed our filament through. Now you can use the software to feed it through, but I find it a lot easier just to do it with your hand and much quicker. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna run it through there until it comes out the hot end. Hopefully you guys, you can see that here. And there it goes, it's coming out. I'm just gonna push some of it out there to purge it. And here on the extruder arm, you can adjust the tightness of it. So, you know, you don't need to make it too tight. You know, as long as it has some decent pressure on it, which mine definitely does, it should be good. But yeah, we are pretty much ready to go. We purged the filament, everything's preheated, leveled. So let's go ahead and click on printing. And I guess we'll just go with the first file, which is called Rocket. And hopefully it's not too big of a file. Okay, so it says Rocket Plane, one hour and 14 minutes. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's go ahead and start with that as our first print. So we're gonna confirm and there it goes. And we get a whole new menu here. Actually, it looks pretty awesome, but yeah, I'll zoom into this in a second once we start printing. But let's get closer here so we can see better. Remove this little booger here. All right, so. There it goes. That was pretty quick. I, we were preheated. Hopefully our offset and everything else is good. And there we go. Okay, we're definitely way too close. So under options, we do have baby steps. And for some odd reason, guys, we had to go up quite a bit, a whole 1.1 millimeters there, at least. So we did kind of scratch into the bed a bit, so we'll probably leave a mark. Well, that's kind of unfortunate. Thought we did a pretty good job there doing the offset, but for some reason, it was way too low still. Very weird. We are printing now, and I think we're good. Yeah, I guess either we did something wrong, or maybe the way the file was sliced, for some reason it started way too low. So our light is on there, it might be too bright. I wonder if I can turn it off. Okay, yeah, looks like I can. Okay, it's RGB, I get it. It's actually called color here, so it's either off, white, or color, and that's gonna go through the different RGB colors, or off. So I'm gonna turn it off for now so we can see a little better of what we're printing. So let's take a closer look at the screen here while the printer's printing. So on the top, we can see our file name. We've got the GTEC logo, percentage bar, the time passed once since we started, the nozzle temperature and the target, the bed temperature and the target, the speed 100%, moving at 15 millimeters a second at this point, feed rates 100, Z axis, and you guys can see that it's going up and up, and I think it's doing spiralized mode. That's why it's going up and up, so. And here we have our fan speed, which is 255, meaning full power. On the bottom, we have pause, stop, and options. We click on options. We can adjust our temperature on the nozzle. And also on the bed, if we hit this button here, that switches between the nozzle and the bed. Here we can change the filament. We're not gonna do that. Adjust the fan speed. Turn our light on and off like we did earlier. Turn on the run out sensor. So you can turn it on and off on the fly, the detection for the filament. The speed of the print, we can make it go faster or slower. And here we got the movement between the extruder and the print itself. And then the most important one here is the baby steps, which is really nice to have this. And this is what I used to adjust it. You guys can see plus 1.13 offset. And this was just a rough, you know, quick trying to go up because we were kind of scraping into the bed. Uh, yeah, lots of good controls here and very well laid out and the screen is very nice and bright. So for the next part, I'm gonna bring my microphone in and uh, you guys can hear the printer.
So overall, it's very quiet. The only thing I can mostly hear is the fans, and the stepper motor sound is completely not audible, at least that I can hear. So, but overall, it's definitely on the quieter side. All right, so I printed this first spaceship and actually didn't turn out that good. So I printed another one with other filament and it was perfect. So I guess this filament is really old or something, but yeah, it just turned out not very good. You guys can see there. So yeah, I figured something was wrong with the filament and it's actually a really old filament. I think it's over two, maybe three years old. So, so I either got to dry it out really good or maybe just throw it away. But in any case, we printed another rocket plane here and it looks like it turned out perfect. But yeah, it did take one hour and 17 minutes to print so let's go ahead and take it off it's pretty much cooled off at this point and you guys can see it's stuck to the bed so let's go ahead and break it loose this is pretty fragile because it's one layer I'm not sure how good it's gonna come off well it did came off pretty well and you guys can kind of see the mark that the first one left it was kind of severe but yeah the second one here popped off really easily and no issues. So looking at it, you guys can see it looks quite impressive. But yeah, if you guys look at the walls and everything, wow, this thing looks pretty incredible. Let's see how close can I get here? Yeah, excellent layer adhesion and consistency. Really good start here on this first print of the rocket plane. And even here all the way up, comes to a pretty small point and it did pretty well there too. Very cool little print actually, it looks nice, I like it.